So apart from looking at putting away the pride and putting on humility, that attitude where of one of which is not puffed up, it affords us favor from God. And if we read a little bit further in James chapter 4, we go to verse 7. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That word submit, or the expectation of submitting, it always tricks many of us up. Because as we, in our adult stage, and some maybe teenagers as well, identify themselves as big men and big women. I is a big man, or I is my own man, or I'm my own woman. So because of us, because we see ourselves sometimes in such a light, I am my own man, I am my own woman. We cannot fathom having to submit or knuckle under the authority of another, especially if we think or we believe that we are of a higher caliber than they are. Or if we know that we may have a little bit more knowledge than this particular authoritative figure has, we find it difficult to submit. But if we don't submit to the authorities that God has placed in our lives, how can we say that we are truly submitting to God? How can we say that? Many people tend to reject serving God because... They can't see themselves submitting to a person or a thing that they cannot see with their natural eyes. So they say, who is God? What is God? How can I submit or serve somebody that I cannot see? How can I? There are people who, who say those things and hold fast to those things. Don't tell me nothing about God. I don't want to hear anything about God. God doesn't exist. And the same people who would think that or would say that God does not exist, sometimes, unfortunately, they're, the, they're ones who are in, in the midst of the intelligentsia. Those with the degrees, and I'm not knocking anybody with any degrees because I myself am a degree person. But there are many within this realm or clique who think that God does not exist and they don't have to pay any regard to God. But they will tell you or believe that oxygen exists even though they can't see it. And not only believe that it exists, they rely on it for their own existence. They can't live without it, even though they can't see it. They know they can't live without it. Just like God, we can't live without him. Even though we may not see him with our natural eyes, he does exist. And regardless of what people may think, it does not change who God is. If we would take time and look around, take time and look around and enjoy what we see on the outside, nature, we would have to be convinced that God does exist. We would have to be convinced that there is a higher power, one who is able to knit and to fashion such beauty and such splendor, cause it to be in existence. God does exist. He does exist. And James says that we should submit to God. We ought to put ourselves in submission to him and to submit to his control. And when I say submit to his control, it is not that God is portraying himself to be some big shot that forces anybody to bow down before him, that forces anybody to do what his word says. No, he puts it before us and gives us the choice to serve him, gives us the choice to accept him, gives us the choice to receive him. 
And when we do that, we see how his word unfolds in our lives. We need, to, we need to allow God to be in control of our thoughts, of our actions, of every single thing about us. We are to yield solely to his wisdom. In James chapter 3, reading from verse 13, it says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Then let him show out of a good conversation or lifestyle his works with meekness of wisdom. But if we have bitter envyings and strive in our hearts and glory not and lie not against the truth, this wisdom descends not from above, but this wisdom is earthly, it is sensual, it is devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above and the wisdom that we ought to be following and gleaning from is first pure, it is peaceable, it is gentle, it is easy to be entreated, it is full of mercy and of a good fruit, it is without partiality, it is wisdom that is without hypocrisy. And we are told that we ought to submit to this wisdom. We ought to submit to God in this manner. And when we talk about submission, as I said before, it is not, when we, are saying, when we say we are submitting to God, it is not just one-on-one -on -one with God, but it, is, it has to do with our relationships here on earth. Whether it be submission in the home, in the marriage, in the workplace, to your employers, wherever it may be, we ought to be submitting. And we also have to be putting it into context because if your employer tells you to do something that is outside of the will of God, it tells you, go and kill that man or go and set the accounts in such a way so that we can steal some dollars. You gotta maintain your integrity. And say, oh no, oh no, I resign. Done, gone, or something. So we have to know what God expects of us in every situation. When it comes to marriage, it's always a ticklish thing. It is always a touchy thing when it comes to marriage. And we are talking about submitting. The word of God says, wives, submit to your husbands. And I always like to emphasize and to reinforce that God also says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. You see, when the two operate and go together, it is beautiful. It is very beautiful. And one thing that I want you to know that we serve a God that is all wise. All wise. And he knows that we do have an adversary. That is the devil that is walking about and looking for every way, every avenue that he can get into to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If you think that he can't get to you, he, you may be strong, yes, but he'll try to get at your children. He'll try to get at somebody who is attached to you to try to get to you. The word of God also says, let him that thinks he stands, take heed lest he falls. Take heed lest he falls. But God knew that we had an adversary. He knew that the devil would be there walking about seeking whom he may devour. That's why he said, submit to me. Submit to my plans. Submit to my commandments. Submit to my word. And when you submit, when you fulfill that requirement, you'll have the promises that are listed in this wonderful word. When you fulfill those requirements. He says submit to God. Resist the devil. And the devil will flee from you. So if you come and you tell me. Boy. 
The devil has been on my back for so long. I can't seem to shake him off. I can't seem to get rid of him. Then I'll tell you, go back and check and make sure that you are truly submitting to God and resisting the devil because God cannot lie. He cannot lie. If he says, submit to God, resist the devil, but still you are listening to those voices that are coming at you and telling you things that are contrary to what God says, that is not resisting the devil. That's not resisting him. When you listen to things that sound like part truth, but you know it is coming from an evil source and you are considering the things that are being said and it's corrupting you, you're not resisting. Take the ultimate example of Jesus. Who after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. He was hungry. Not the kind of hunger that we feel when we don't eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner. The kind of hunger you'll feel when you have taken yourself away from any substance for 40 days and 40 nights. And then here comes. You could read that in Matthew chapter 4. Here comes his adversary, the devil. He knows his, his weak area. He was hungry. His vulnerable area. And he's coming to throw some things at him. I know who you are. You are God. I know your ability. You know you can, you can take that stone and you can turn it into bread. You can do that, you know. Of course, it was not a lie. But where was this? What, who was the source of this information? Who was the source of this instruction? You see, that's what tricks us up so many times. That's what causes us to stumble. That's what causes us to fall. Because we do not take time to analyze where this, what's the source of the information or the instructions that comes to us. Do like Jesus did. He knew it was the enemy, his adversary, that was telling him these things that were true. But he rejected. He resisted. He resisted. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But the enemy didn't finish there. He kept coming back again. He came back again. I know that you have many angels that are ministering before you. Throw down yourself. Throw down yourself. But Jesus said, no. No. Don't tempt God. Don't do that. I'm not acknowledging what you're seeing. I'm not taking on what you're seeing. And because sometimes we take on our enemies too much. I don't care what they say. Let me say that again. I don't care what the enemy says. As long as the source is the enemy, I disregard it. I put it out the door. Throw it in the trash. I don't care how enticing it may seem. I don't want any part of it. No part of it. Do like Jesus did. Take him as your example and resist the enemy. And when you resist, he will flee from you. God cannot lie. The simplicity of the God.